thanks so much for downloading the episode on the show today. We celebrate teachers. We talk about some of our favorite teachers, some of our experiences, the good and the bad in honor of Teacher Appreciation Week. We also talk about animals in my world, the good, the bad, the bugly. Yes, the bugly. And of course, our ugly and awkward moments of the week. Enjoy the show. It's another uncensored look at the world around you from sisters who will say just about anything to anyone at any time. It's the Uggs. Jamie? I'm sure there's some people listening who'd love to kick us in the ass. (laughs) Paula? You son of a bitch! Uncensored as always, it's time for the Ugly Truth. You could have waited. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Stupid. Ready? Go. <clears throat> Get that phlegm out. Welcome to the Ugly Truth. This is episode 275. Ugh, ugh. I'm Jamie with my sister Paula, and we're here to talk about stuff. We are recording on Teacher Appreciation Day. Officially, well, now, let's see. You have grade school kids, so you have a Teacher Appreciation Week that began on Monday. You know what? Remarkably, of all the things that go on at that school that we get notices about, I never heard a word about this. Really? That's interesting. It could be a flyer that didn't make its way home. I don't know. That's really funny. Well, how it, how strong is your PTA would be the question. Strong. Because the teachers will not let you know that it's Teacher Appreciation Day. Because it's one of those things, it's like you don't walk around going, five more days till my birthday. They don't do it. It's up to others to remind you that they need to be appreciated. And every day on Teacher Appreciation Week, in grade school specifically, is a new thing. Like, on Monday, we're providing them with a really lovely breakfast. And then there's usually a luncheon on the last day. They do special things all week. And usually on like the Wednesday or Thursday, they highly recommend that the students make a card or a poem or something to, you know, honor their teachers. Hmm. But if the PTA is super strong, they're probably doing everything. I wonder if maybe we were going to get a flyer today and then you it's going to tell us about, I know I got a flyer yesterday asking me if I wanted to volunteer at the uh, spring carnival and making <laughs> popcorn and <laughs> spray painting kids hair with glitter and i'm just like no i don't did they hear about your uh, snack bar duty so they're like oh put her in popcorn they're like oh she's 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 done it before she's got experience i'm like would you like to see my resume (laughs) would you like to see my volunteer resume i can do it with nacho cheese i made 10 nachos with uh only one (laughs) incident (laughs) they're like put her in She's she's good. She doesn't mind getting cheese in her hair. <laughs> so we want that one. Just give her gloves. So, yes. Yeah, so it's Teacher Appreciation Week. And I was thinking about that because we all have teachers who we used to absolutely adore, whether it was our kindergarten teacher or a high school literature English teacher or whatever. And then those that we just couldn't wait to get, get away from. Yes. I was thinking about it. And I'm like, you know. I had a lot of teachers that I hated from middle school through high school, but I did learn lessons even from them. You know, they're all you you always learn something from an an educator, whether it's a good one or a bad one. And like, I, I will never forget. I had a math teacher in high school who showed up drunk. Oh, and God. He sent the whole class to the office and he was like whiskey drunk. And he was my first period teacher. So, I mean, we're talking this dude was hardcore showing up to school hammered at 8 a.m. And I remember sitting there going, even then I'm like, I am not going to the principal's office. I did nothing wrong. But then I'm thinking, I don't want to be alone with this dude. So I'm going to go ahead and go with everybody else. So so what did the office say? They clearly could see that something was a- amiss. Yes. And we were all, you know how kids are, 14-year-old kids. We we're all like loud and like, thank God we got out of that class, you know, yeah. and all that stuff. So what do I do? I call her mother. And I'm like, mom, my math teacher's drunk. What? Yeah, he sent us all to the principal's office. I'm on my way. Because <laughs> our mom loves a good fight. 
So she shows up to the school, immediately demands an appearance with the principal, Mr. Rubin, who is, by the way, one of the coolest principals we ever had. And uh, she gets an appearance with him and they both march to the math class where the teacher is sitting at his desk with the whiskey in his drawer, quietly just sitting there in his drunken stupor. Of course, our mother, she's like, how dare you show up intoxicated at class sending my children, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. And Mr. Mr. Room is just standing there quietly going, what's going on here, man? Like, because he was a brother. Oh, uh, and- uh-huh. <laughs> okay. And uh, he's like, what's going on here? And he's like, you know, they're terrible children, blah, blah, blah. And I sent them all away. They're outrageous. They're disrespectful and, you know, slurring and such. And then, so mom said something smart mouthy, shockingly. Yeah. And uh, he got in her face. <sighs> like, got in her face. And this dude was big. He was not a small man. He was a big dude. He was really drunk. Like, really drunk. And then Mr. Rubin finally is like, all right, that's enough of this. They actually had to call the sheriff and have him escorted off the property. Wow. He was really bad. Yeah. And so when I said, well, my mom got him kicked off the property. Yeah! There was a big celebration, and then <laughs> Mr. Rubin took over the class. So it was serious business after that. Jeez. Really oh, yeah, because, you know, when the principal takes over the class, that's a big deal. Fun is over. And Mr. Rubin, as cool as he was, he was the principal after Still all. Still the principal. So, yeah. But I, I, the lesson learned, don't come to work drunk. Well. <laughs> Ever. Ever. Especially at eight in the morning. My God. Damn. I, I just think he didn't stop drinking. I just think he had a binge all weekend and then just showed up because his body was telling him it's Monday and it's time to go. But yeah, it was it was one of the more uh, memorable experiences I had with a teacher. But uh, but obviously there's also good ones as well. <laughs> there's also good ones. You must have had. I remember you like really loving some of your teachers when you were younger. I did love some of my teachers. You like really love them. You were like, yeah, you're right. Like my like. Well, that's the cool thing about some teachers is that you just you just love them so much. They're like the best. Well, and, and especially if you have a good class too, mm-hmm. where everyone yeah. just really enjoys the class and you have a good teacher, it just makes for a super fun year. It does. It doesn't even feel like school. It just feels like going and hanging out with your friends. I know. And then the work seems easier. And, you know, it's, you just, cl- when you click with a, with a teacher, it's just, it makes everything so pleasant. And then, you know, inevitably, the next year, you go in with those same high hopes, and it's just not the same. And so you suffer like a bit of a heartache, even if they're a good teacher. No, my next year t- teacher was awful. <laughs> it was Miss Poloni. <gasps> Mrs. Poloni was so mean. I hated her. Well, that's why she ended up being a principal, because she was so good at being mean. Because she <sighs> was a good principal. <laughs> terrible god so i'm just like i just want to go back to third grade please it is so true mrs martin was my one of my first teachers that i absolutely loved i loved her so much well it was kindergarten you just had to color blue ducks and (laughs) i went to kindergarten in the bay area we moved up here she was my second grade teacher we were her first class ever she was oh. brand new out of teaching. She was just graduated or whatever you do to become an instructor or an educator. And so we were her first official class. And I remember um, loving her so much. I thought she was the prettiest, funniest, smartest teacher I'd ever had. And then I, the next year I had Mrs. Green who was like the meanest grandma you've ever met in your life. <laughs> she wore green polyester suits. All the time. She had them in every color of green. And she was mean. Ugh. I never liked her. But she's dead now, so. Maybe they did do a teacher appreciation because in my one of my rants last week mm. about feeling like an ATM machine because... <laughs> You know, every time the kids bring home a form and they hand it to me, it's just like, we're going to be doing such and such. And, you know, we'll need $12 cash. Oh, you think that's what it was? One of them was eat lunch with your teacher outside. (gasps) It will cost $10. And so I'm just like, why does it cost $10 to eat with your teacher? Just go get your lunch (laughs) and bring it outside. 
because it's teacher appreciation week and they're having pizza that's exactly what it was and there so you I'm go just like you can go to little caesar's and get a whole pizza <laughs> for 7.99 <laughs> what the heck my daughter eats like a bird and right, she's not right gonna eat a slice of pizza that a whole is so slice. Funny. she'd rather go play recess Right. She'll sit there for five minutes, take two bites and go, well, I think I'm done. They're like, no, we're sitting together as a class. We're all eating together. It's like, oh, God. Yeah, as a class. But she's not going to be nuzzled up to her teacher. You know. Does she love her teacher? She does. Oh, her teacher's good. really good. I love oh, her teacher. That's nice. It's always good when you got a good one. They know Olivia is like a talker. And so they indulge her little <laughs> stories and her she's little so like, you know, ideas that pop into her head and. Or when yeah. Olivia wants to show him her dances, you oh, know. Geez, that's so funny. Speaking of teaching, I taught your daughter how to make slime the last time you guys came over to my house. She still has it. She still has the slime? Yeah. I don't, know if make more? I don't know if it's slimy, but it still there. Well, it is. Did, does she want to make more yet? She's kind of into clay right now. I bought her oh. some clay, and so she likes to make little shapes. Her favorite was a butt that she made. Awesome. <laughs> With a little turd, and so perfect, yeah. And she's saving that. I assume that's somewhere sitting on something. No, I smushed it and made her. Told her to make something more constructive. Oh God! Hopefully she doesn't go to the front. No, she doesn't know how to do that. <laughs> well, really, it's the same. So it doesn't yeah, matter. N- not much difference. <laughs> no. That's funny. So, <laughs> well, happy teacher appreciation week to those instructors of the of the schooling world. Of, of course, we all have different varieties of teachers. We have our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the greatest teacher. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I've been saving that one. I've been dying to say. You're it. Weird. I know. I'm sorry, but there are other teachers. <laughs> I know we have lots of. Uh, teachers that listen to the show so uh, we do appreciate you being on the front lines and you really uh, are and you know what's sad is it's changed so much you know being a teacher was used to be one way and now it's just basically wrangling kittens and just trying to get them to the next grade sometimes you can't impart your wisdom because they're hungry or distracted by their iphones or something i mean well not only trying to educate them but then also you know trying to recognize the the little weird ones that might mm-hmm. need a extra nudge or something mm-hmm. like that uh, that's true i think that would be the hardest part actually is yeah. the ones that maybe are being neglected or abused or something like that yeah i think that's actually quite common unfortunately when you especially now when the classrooms are so full you know 28 to 32 kids depending on the grade and then you inevitably i mean if you look at statistics yeah you've got a couple in there who aren't doing well i remember um having a conference with one of the kids teachers once and i think first of all i do not have the temperament to instruct children I don't, I barely like the ones that I have, let alone having to instruct other children. But what would really get me is the ones that are clearly falling through the cracks, Mm -hmm. the ones that are obviously not, you know, a little disheveled and not being cared for as well as they should be as little kids. That would break my heart. That would really hurt my heart. It would be hard. I, I don't even know. I would feel personally responsible well, legally, they are. If they ever see anything, they have to legally report it. But then, but again, I mean, I would want to like take them under my wing. You know? Oh yeah, I mean? you'd want to take them in and yeah. and like do something or go beat up their parents or something <laughs> like that. You know, to be like, yeah, what are you doing? You know, Joseph is an excellent child. Make the situation even better, right? <laughs> right. But I mean, you they can only do so much, and I think yes. that would be so difficult. It would but... be difficult to send them home for sure. But you also hear those stories where. Where the teachers made such an impact on yes. that child's life that yes. it really helped them turn around or not even turn around. But when they grew up, mm-hmm. you know, they were able to make great strides because of the teachers that they had that, you know, really helped them along. So producer Dub's mother is a special needs educator in the Bay Area, mm-hmm. and she is so good at her job that she has students who come back to see her when they're grown ass adults after they leave call, you know, they leave high school and they come back and they tell her that she's the reason why they continued 
because of the things that she said to them and what she taught them. Because the one thing about Daryl's mother is that everybody has a road to hoe. Everybody has the burden of something, whether you are on the spectrum, uh, shitty parents, some kind of dis- reading disability, whatever it is. Everybody has a struggle when it, especially when you spend so much time, most of your time in, as a kid is spent in school, which I think is why these teachers, when they're really good uh, about what to say, it leaves such an impact for the rest of your life, for your the rest of your life. It's as important as a good parent sometimes with some of these children. And they come back and thank her years and years. She's had kids come back in their 30s thanking her for what she did to, for them 15 years ago or whatever. And it it moves her to tears as it should. But mm-hmm. it's also how fulfilling. Yeah. You know, when you get a really crappy class, you've got really destructive kids. And then the one, the worst of them all comes back 10 years later to tell you what an impact you made. It really makes it worthwhile, I yeah. think. No, I definitely think so. So our teachers should definitely should be appreciated. Word. I guess the $10 pizza is worth it. <laughs> Thank you for your sacrifice. Shouldn't complain about it. Well, they're not all that good. Some are shitty. Some show up drunk. Yeah. Some throw chairs, put kids in closets. It happens. It's true. (laughs) Talking about you, Mr. Huffman, Mr. Huffman, Huffman. math teacher, (laughs) who's, he was an ex-military and he had a temper. Some people can't find their papers in their desk, so Miss Poloni takes the desk out and empties, empties it out on the floor in the middle of the room. <laughs> Makes you clean it. Makes you clean it up in front of everyone. Yeah. <laughs> then there's those. That's rude. It is rude. <laughs> it's like, seriously. But yes, and then there's the go-betweens, the, the happy, happy ones that just give you great projects and, and are yeah. easy on you. Yeah, I agree. So uh, with that being said, I read something that went viral the other day. I will tell you why it makes me mad, because I don't know why this woman is getting so much attention for something that happens all the time. I read her article. It was quite descriptive. And there were a couple of things. This is a woman from Florida who had a cockroach climb into her ear when she was sleeping. Horrifying. I'm not denying it. It's awful. It's horrifying that she had a cockroach in her house, but... Well, she's in Florida. Let's get beyond the obvious fact. I don't know what part of Florida, but I assume that those types of creatures are prevalent in that humid climate. Just like New York. New York has roaches. Yeah, but not in your home. Here's the thing about it that makes me kind of cringy is what kind of medical care are they doling out in Florida that it took nine days to eradicate a roach from one's ear canal? That's my issue with the whole thing. She went to, she had her boyfriend pull out. He plucked out two legs and it clearly didn't do it. So she went to the ER, which I wouldn't have done yet, but only because I've had experience and I'll I'll explain later. They... They pulled it. They they put in something to kill the thing, and it, you know, starts squiggling around in there, which would be horrifying in and of itself. And I thought cockroaches hissed. Like, wouldn't that thing start hissing and stuff? Like, that would freak me out. Unless it was drowning. I don't <gasps> know. <laughs> so they they pull out pieces of it, segments of it, which I didn't even know roaches had segments. I thought they were like beetles, and he just pulled them out. I don't know. They swear they got it all. Sent her ass home with antibiotics. She went back to the doctor a few, like nine days later and said, oh, there's a blockage in your ear. And they pulled out like a head, like they pulled out more of it. And I and I'm thinking, OK, what what the fuck is going on in the ERs of Florida? How big was this thing? I don't know. But why? Why could you not see the head inside this woman's ear? Like, why did you send her home? With still stuff in her ear canal. You're telling me that it was, you gave her the all clear and then she, she didn't feel anything either, by the way. The doctor goes in there, looks around and says, oh, there's something in there. They flush her ear and a bunch of body parts come out. And I'm like, what's happening? Like, what? Why is this? I mean, and the head, the head came out nine days later. 
Now, it's all horrific. I feel sorry for the woman, but I want to know what the hell is going on in Florida in the medical community that they can't eradicate one goddamn Amy, cockroach. Like, what is the deal? There's one word in your sentence that is, can only explain what happened here, and it's <laughs> Florida. Florida. I don't know what goes the on only- down there. I just know it's the one little appendage. <laughs> it's like a skin tag that just needs to be cut off the United <laughs> States. It's the flaccid penis of the country. And I I don't want to hate Florida. I really don't, you know? No. There's there's some beautiful areas there. We have we have of friends and relatives that yes. live there. But there's some weird shit that yeah. goes on down there that it's just inexplicable. It is weird how that it all happens there. It's like if you see some weird paint huffing person who's covered in gold flecked spray paint in a mugshot probably in florida you know, something. something they that person that ate that person's face when they were on bath salts that happened in florida <sighs> i don't know man they got some weird there's some weird shenanigans going on down there um the only other thing i thought was there was more than one in there oh my god that's what i'm thinking because it makes more sense that there were that another one went in or or one was in there and that her ear canal <laughs> was just a home for more than one. What was it like a destination hotel or something? <laughs> well, it is Jeez. Florida. So anything's possible. It's like a bed and breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's the only thing I can think is there was actually more than one. Because if the ER pulled out a head, then it would make sense that they got it all. But if another one was in there and they didn't get it, that would be another thing. You know, because that seems like a lot of bug to not see in one's ear canal. They're not. Our ear canals are not that no, big. I not. mean, come on. They're not that big. And if you're flushing that shit out, it should co- float to the surface at some point. I mean, dump some peroxide in there. Well, that's my experience is uh, it's funny how you can be embarrassed when something like this occurs, but it's no. not anyone's fault. It just happens. I was watching The Little Mermaid. I was 18 and I was watching The Little Mermaid um, on a VHS tape with my then boyfriend. And we were sitting on his couch where he was living with like five other guys, you know, one of those things. And we were just watching Little Mermaid. And then all of a sudden I felt what I thought was his finger near my ear because it was like a lot of rustling, like light rustling near my ear. And I was like, hey, knock it off. And something went into my ear. And I went, oh, my God. Now, knowing me, I thought it was a spider because I even back then I was terrified of spiders. And he's like, what? So he gets out his flashlight and he's trying to look and he can't see anything. I'm like, there's something in there. I can feel it crawling around in my ear. And at this point, I'm hysterically crying, as anybody would, by the way. Oh, my God. There was something was pinching me and it hurt like those movies that you see where they put scary bugs in people's ears to eat their brain out that's what it felt like i thought something was going to get into my brain because i was a dumb 18 year old and so he can't help me now he's turning he has turned an ashen gray and now my boyfriend at the time it was alan he is a very tan person he's a naturally olive skinned person and so he turned gray and he said we're going to your mother's it was like 12 30 in the morning I said, okay. So we get in the car and we're driving and it's the longest five minutes of our (laughs) lives. I'm screaming every time this thing pinches me and I'm crying. And I'm like, I I thought we had to go to the ER. I said, I think we should go to the ER. He goes, we're taking you to your mother because she'll know what to do. We blow through their house. I mean, talk about my mom, our mother shooting out of bed and you were there. You were a kid. You probably just don't remember. Maybe you slept through it. Probably. I was, I have never been so terrified in my life. So I'm thinking it's a spider. I think a spider's biting me. This whole time I think it's a spider. So mom comes out and Alan's trying to explain calmly what's going on. And she's like, Jamie, lay down. So I lay on the couch. She gets a big bottle of peroxide and pours, she dumps the whole thing into my ear, floods it. Out comes a pincher bug, an earwig, probably almost two inches long. Oh, God. It was the biggest earwig I've ever seen in my life. And, of course, Alan takes it and just demolishes yeah, it. Really? <laughs> just like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
killed it. Killed it. Although it was pretty dead from the peroxide, he made sure it was dead. I will kill you until you die from it. <laughs> I had I had never been so terrified and in so much pain in my life. And she's like, well, I think the peroxide is probably going to kill whatever bacteria he left in there. Because, I mean, the whole bottle. The whole bottle. You know. Jeez. And so I said, I think I'm just going to stay. <laughs> I just stayed the night. I didn't leave. I didn't want to go back to that house. Yeah, really. I'm like, you need a exterminator. Like, you need to get Clark Pest Control out there and start spraying. Jesus Christ. We're on the we were in the living room and that thing dug into my ear. No. So I get it. I get this woman's plight. What I don't get is the medical community. That's the struggle I have with it. All she really probably needed to do was just call her mom. Well, that's, you know, that's what I'm saying. You know, our mom might have some issues, but at least she knows how to kill a good earwig. Good Lord. (laughs) God. Moms know everything. And what's frightening is now that's me. And I don't know what I would do. I don't know. Well, get the peroxide, I guess. (laughs) No, no, nope, it's not a spider. It's like the, what was that movie where, uh, my big fat Greek wedding? Yes. Oh, dad, he sprayed Windex on everything. (laughs) Yes. I was just so relieved it wasn't a spider, Paula. I have to tell you, I almost went comatose when that thing came out and it wasn't a spider. I was like, oh, thank God. I was so relieved. I had no idea what it was. I really, well, Alan really thought it was an earwig, but I wasn't sure. I'm like, well, now we know why they call them that. God. Oh, my God. I I didn't even put two and two together. I know. Well, I did. Well, they call them pincher bugs, too. Yes, which they definitely are. Earwig is also. They're the crabs of the bug world. Gross. Although crabs are kind of like bugs. I don't. I, I, as I've gotten older, I've, I've been less less in love with the crab and lobster community. They're just kind of gross. They're spidery. I don't know. I struggle. Yeah, it just depends. Yeah, I don't know. So speaking of animals, I have some pleasant news on the animal planet front, the miners. Yes. Daryl and I, every, I'd say every, maybe twice a year, really once a year for real we get hammered on our deck like we just go to town we we find something that we enjoy drinking and we just drink way too much of it and sit on our deck and listen to music and every time that happens it's so funny he said this to me the other day because we did it this over this last weekend we had uh, it was the kentucky derby the day before and so we decided Let's have some more of those. Those were really good. And so we had some bourbon summer drinks. Mm -hmm. They were so good. (laughs) We just kept drinking them. And then we also ended up drinking a bottle of champagne. Wow. In our drunken stupor every time. And this has happened to us three times in the last three years. For some reason, we decide that we need to go see Willie Nelson. And so we scour the internet looking for Willie Nelson tickets. And the next day when we sober up, we go, why do we always want to go see Willie Nelson when we get really drunk? It's so weird. We always do. In our drunken stupor, while he's looking for Willie Nelson, we notice these ha- these hummingbirds. And they're everywhere. We have them. But they, they've been really prevalent the last couple of days. Sure enough, in our little tree, we have a little tree right by our deck. They built a nest. A little oh. hummingbird nest. I've never seen a hummingbird nest in real life. So we go over there, and it is adorable. It's so tiny. And so we go upstairs on our upstairs deck, and we look in, and there's little eggs in there. (gasps) No way. Way. I'm so excited. And so I did some research because I wanted to know, what's the deal with the hummingbirds? Like, are they going to hatch in, like, six months? Like, how long is the incubator process? They hatch in 18 days, 15 to 18 days. Oh, wow. Super fast. And so I, it said if you get if you ever get the opportunity to see the, the stages of a hummingbird, definitely do it because it's it's really rare because they usually have their nest really high up off the ground. But sometimes if they find a really good place, they'll just do it and you'll, you'll get lucky and see it. So did you get your camera and zoom in and take pictures. I did. Good. I did. I'll post them so you can see them. And I'll, I'll post them before the show drops because I want you to see them. It's so cute. And, I, and I've and i got a picture of the mama sitting on the nest 
and the oh, two little cool. eggs. They're so cute. And I just, I just, I'm so excited. But apparently the mama does all the work. If dad ever shows oh. up, she chases him off. <laughs> She's like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> just, just, just get the hell out of here. <laughs> because the the males are very brilliantly colored because that's how they attract the females. Yeah. And the mamas will think that it will attract predators. And so oh. they chase them off. They don't let them near the babies. So it'll be really cute. And I will definitely post pictures so that you can see. I can't wait. I can't wait. And of course, they're born with like no feathers or anything. So but but within five days, they have feathers. So it's really fast. Wow. Really, really fast. And I don't know if it's the kind of thing where they come back year after year or whatever. But what's cool is I found out that hummingbirds build their nest with spider webs because as the babies get bigger, the nest will expand so they can fit. Oh. Is that the most coolest thing ever? How neat. I love nature. I love nature too when it's good. I mean, I don't yeah. like the skunks and the possums and shit, but this is really neat. So, I'm just I'm just hoping nothing bad happens to them. I want them to you know, stay good and and I want to watch it. I'm so excited. I'm I just can't wait. So, that's the good news on the on the front. Thankfully. And that's it. There is no bad news. I'm so happy about that. Good. No skunk killings. No or... death. No nothing. It's just been just happy And you joy. guys got a new fish. Oh, my God. Yes. That's the other news is I told you that our beta died. And yes. so a whole week passed. And apparently I've just come to peace with the fact that we are fish people. So <laughs> we went and bought another beta. This one is a black orchid male, and we named him Marshawn. I named him Marshawn. <laughs> he's awesome. Is it because he's black? Yes, and silver. <laughs> he's black and silver like the Raiders, and Marshawn Lynch is a very cool dude. And so <laughs> this guy's got some swagger, and he's aggressive. And so I kept him, and I named him Marshawn. Plus, I have a little snail. Oh, my God, Paula. I thought I killed the snail when I was cleaning out the tank. When we came home with Marshawn, I was yeah. dumping out all the water and I thought that I put him down the drain. And so Daryl, he's like, we are not letting this happen. You are not killing another thing. So he opens up the, the disposal looking for it. And that little snail had hidden under the sand because he knew. And so he was safe. But it was funny because I was I was like, I can't believe I did it again. I killed another oh, thing. God. But I did it. <laughs> Thank God. So I get all the tank. Jeez. It's all beautiful and clean and healthy and the snail's happy. And Marshawn gets in the tank and he immediately starts biting the snail. <laughs> he immediately no. starts attacking it. But he can't get to it. The snail's got a shell. So it's all good. Right. But I said, yeah, well, he's a uh, yellow and black. So we'll just assume he's Ben Roethlisberger from the Steelers. Marshawn's just kicking his ass. <laughs> right. So. Anyway, yes, so all good news on the front. Now we're just all hopeful that we don't kill this one. That he actually can live some life and He looked pretty hardy. He does. So. He does look hardy. So welcome to the family, Marshawn. Happy to hear we'll happy to have you. Hopefully he'll last uh some some time. I'm hoping. My God. Anyway, so uh speaking of awkward moments, it's time for our ugly and awkward moment of the week. <laughs> Mine's kind of weak sauce this week. Mm. As you know, the basketball playoffs are going on right now. Yes. Or I don't know if you know. I don't know if you guys are big basketball players, watchers. You know, we were fans when the Kings were were doing well with Chris Webber and Vlade and Mm -hmm. all that. But we kind of lost interest and moved on to greener pastures. Well, Ryan's way into basketball right now. Yes. He wants the uh, Golden State Warriors to win, Mm -hmm. but he's also likes the Cleveland Browns. Oh, he likes LeBron? uh, Yeah. Well, who doesn't? He's goat. Yeah, he's good. Mm -hmm. So we watch a lot of basketball, but there's like a a series of games before that's even the finals. So, I mean, it'll still be weeks before that (laughs) happens, it seems like. It's true. It took me a while to kind of like I know how basketball works, but it just took me a while to like get into it. And so 
I try and cheer and, you know, get excited <laughs> just so that way, you know, Ryan doesn't feel like he's alone. And, you know, I've always tried to, you know, champion whatever interests Ryan. So that way, you know, yeah. it's it's like a team family sport thing. So we were watching it the other night and sometimes my words get jumbled. It's not like I'm trying to, you know, purposely say something wrong. It's just your words get jumbled. Like, you know, you say things backwards. Yeah. Or something like that. But I, like I said, I was, you know, excited and getting into it. And so, you know, one of the characters, <laughs> or one of the characters, one of the say, characters, one of the ball players on the Cleveland Browns got. <laughs> a free throw and it was like close to the end of the game and we needed it at the, the points. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, yes, he got the three throw. <laughs> and, <so, laughs> and then everyone stopped and looked at me and they're like, he got the what? The three throw, just, right? I'm like, he got the free throw. I'm like, I just mixed up my words. What's a, That's th all. What's a three throw? <laughs> it's so forever now. It's ever now since it's I've fro. said it. It's three throw. That's and funny. everyone just talks about it. Well, listen, if you weren't around to keep things colorful, it would be a boring home. That's all I have it to say. It would be. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry I can't be as perfect as the rest of you because I know none of you ever make mistakes. None of you ever have awkward moments. I mean, you're only for my spawn, but whatever. I know. Olivia asked Victor, get this, Olivia asked Victor what his, you know, most awkward moment is. And he's like, I can't really think of one. I'm like, oh, yes, because you're so perfect. Oh, I can think you, of you some. Know, You've never done And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, don't worry. I'm all, you have other flaws. Tripping over your own feet would be the best thing that ever happened to you. <laughs> that would be the best moment. I'm like, you definitely have other flaws, Victor. It's all right. Being awkward would be an improvement on some aspects of our lives. <laughs> yeah. It'd be that's the least funny. of your worries. Really? <laughs> well, that's actually pretty funny. Okay, so mine is very, you know, it's funny. Isn't it funny how we can rank our awkward moments? Like to, there's the epic and then there's the just the daily average three fro grocery store jaunts. Right. As I told you last week, I wasn't sure what was going on, whether I was having a dental issue or a sinus infection. Well, it actually ended up being both. So I was coming back from the dentist office waiting for a prescription because I had a sinus infection too. And so I was waiting for that and decided, well, I'm here. I might as well buy some food because when doesn't my family need to feed? And so I was buying things and uh, I was in the pasta aisle. Now, I don't really buy pasta that often anymore because we don't really eat that much but we were actually completely out and you know we have a child who still needs carbs and so I have to buy some this grocery store particularly that I go to they are very vigilant about making sure that all the product is pulled up front so that the um the shelves look full it's aesthetically pleasing. And, right. and especially when this was on a Thursday, which means maybe they haven't received a delivery to stock the shelves yet. So they're trying to make things look like, hey, we have food. So when that happens, I grab a long box of fettuccine. And now there is a gentleman with his daughter. The daughter will not stop staring at me. And the gentleman starts acting like he's the coolest thing to walk the planet and I, and I hate that. I'm like, please don't show off for me. I'm no one. And I give zero fucks. I don't even know what your face looks like. Like, I don't care. But but people do that sometimes where they start to kind of um, perform. They try, they try and make an effort. And I'm just like, I'm stop just not it. in the mood. Just stop. So I'm not even going to look. I, I didn't. And to this, I mean, I know he's one of our people. But I, other than that, I couldn't tell you. So <laughs> I walk past them and I'm like trying to be cool because I don't care about you so I'm going to be cooler so I grab the fettuccine box that's been pulled up front along with seven other boxes that fall on the floor cascading <laughs> down on the floor <laughs> so not only now I could be that asshole that just takes my box and wanders off but no I'm not going to do that so no. then I start picking them all up and I'm like well I am no longer cool you are the cool. <laughs> I am the dummy who doesn't know how to take a box off a shelf. Well, I mean, they should have lined them up to where they, they weren't going to all fall when someone took one thing of fettuccine, for God's sakes. <laughs> I know. But it's one of those things where it's like Jenga. 
they put them on top of each other, skinny side up, instead of laying them flat on the on the long side, which I don't understand why they don't do that anyway. But yeah, yeah some somebody got creative and decided to build a wall of fettuccine. And so when I grab it, the whole wall falls and I have to now pick it up in front of the people that I that I was too cool to acknowledge. Life loves to humble me. <laughs> Just life loves to humble me at every turn. I can't even have a moment without being awkward. Like, I just wanted some fettuccine. I just wanted to be cool and grab this pasta and just move on with my day thinking I was the shit. But Ignore this dude. Move on with my life and let him know I was better than he was. (sighs) For a moment. For just a smattering of time. But no. Apparently, I can't do that. God. Oh, well. At least it wasn't like, you know... (sighs) spaghetti noodles or something well, like that. Well, what would have been or... worse is if, it, if something had broken open. <laughs> oh, God. That would have been the epic, but that did not happen, thankfully. It was just boxes tumbling to the ground. Anyway, so that was my awkward moment this week. That is embarrassing. It is embarrassing. <laughs> I, I say it. you win. Thanks. That's pretty embarrassing. Well, thank you. But who who really wins? Who really wins? I know. The only other thing I was going to mention is the new movie for Overboard came out. It did? Yes. The one where they reverse, where the the rich person with amnesia is a Mexican man, and the poor person with the children is a blonde white girl. Okay. That's the, that's, that's the, the, the change up for our most beloved movie, Overboard. Is this a, like a Netflix movie? No, or? it's a real movie. And I have not heard boo about yes. it. Yes. Well, I mean, I knew it was coming out and I protested. I refused to. I won't watch it. I won't see it. I will not support it. And I do love Anna Ferris, but I won't watch this film. And um, just because why would you remake something that was perfect the first time? I don't understand it. So it made a whole six hundred million dollars <laughs> this year or this this weekend, which is considering that the Avengers made a billion I'm just saying, I think I am not alone in my protest. Well, they didn't promote it at all. Because no one wants it. No one wants it. Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell, why would you mess with that? That's crazy. There was a time when J-Lo was tied to the Overboard do-over, and that got axed immediately. Thank God. You know? Well, she just can't play poor. (laughs) It's just... It's not possible. She did Made in Manhattan. Yeah, but I mean... But even then, she she got to play rich. (laughs) She didn't look like a maid. Well, not only that, but I mean, in the movie, she gets to play rich. She gets to pretend. She gets to wear Harry Winston and, you know, haute couture. So, yeah, you're right. I don't think she does know how to play poor, really. (laughs) All All right. right. Well, I think that's a wrap for today. Thank you, everybody, for joining us and listening to us show after show. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I hope you're having a wonderful Mother's Day if you're listening today. Yes. Happy Mother's Day, moms. Let your mother know that we said Happy Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. Give her the gift of podcast and let her know about our show. If she's like-minded. I mean, if she doesn't like the word cunt, then don't tell her to listen that's true she has to pass the cunt test she does <laughs> and then if you uh, need to do some shopping please go to our ugly mall and click on the amazon button and do all of your shopping through there and the little percentage that we get definitely helps the show so we appreciate that there's also an avon button that you can click on and do your makeup skincare all sorts of fantastic items that you can shop through on the Avon button. I encourage you to do that. If you want to just donate, you can hit the PayPal button and give us five bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, however much bucks you want to give. Yes. I'm not talking about donkey kicks. I'm talking about real bucks, <laughs> like dollars. Thank you. I'm sure there's some people listening who'd love to kick us in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Remember we used to do that? I'll yeah. give you 10 bucks. <laughs> yeah, for the, the hee haw. No, that's not what I was talking about. I'm going to give you the hee haw. The hee haw? Yeah. It was, we would be bucking like a Bronco, and then <laughs> we would we would buck someone's ass. <laughs> you don't remember? 
Barely. Yeah. Well, you know, deep down, if you delve deeply, you would remember that memory. I may have blocked that out of my childhood. That along with putting bologna on someone's stomach and letting our dog eat it. No, I remember that vividly. (laughs) Yes. We were weird. So, all right, friends. Have a happy Mother's Day, and we'll see you on Wednesday. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening and sharing the show. See you next time on The Ugly Truth.